Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the big November 2025 update for Windows 11 25H2. This update has also been released to 24H2, but in this video, we're only covering 25H2. And the update that we're talking about has been released to the release preview channel. And the build is 26200.7296 or build code KB5070311. In this video, as always, we're going to talk about everything that is new, changed, improved, and so on. And if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below below and also subscribe to the tech base channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. This video is sponsored by Remotely. Remotely is a free remote PC access software that can help you connect easily to your computer using any Android device or another computer from any place on earth. With this software, you can remotely access and control any files and applications on your PC in lag-free 4K HDR quality. You can use it for business or as a private user to watch movies or play games with your friends, help you relatives with their PCs, use your Android device as a gaming console when you commute, and so on. Connecting is as easy as pressing a button, and previous devices will be saved in your software so that you can easily connect to them again later. It also has a recording feature, voice access support, along with gamepad and custom keyboard mapping presets. Remotely uses very little CPU with a ultra-strong connection ID and an advanced authentication system. Connect to your computer for free using Remotely today from the description below. Let's continue with the video. First of all, as always, I have to remind you that if you want to get all the latest features, make sure you open up the settings app, go to Windows Update, and before checking for updates, make sure you enable get the latest updates as soon as they are available. And basically, this way you're going to be able to get all the latest updates earlier than others. And of course, I'm also going to make a video which I'll show you how to enable all these features manually if some features aren't present in your install because Microsoft is still slowly rolling out a few features. Now, let's start with the new features in this update that will come in the main release in about one or two weeks time. First of all, let's get all the AI features out of the way. And at first, we're talking about the Windows Studio effects that Microsoft is improving and adding multiple camera support for this feature. And the Windows Studio effects basically will allow you to add some AI powered camera enhancements on your camera whenever you're using it, for example, in a stream, in a meeting, and so on. I remind you again, these AI features that I'm talking about right now are only present for Copilot Plus B PCs, so you won't see them on a normal computer. Related to click to do, Microsoft is adding a new context menu with a new streamlined design, and also the context menu will automatically open whenever a large image or table appears on your screen. Related to the agent and settings that will also be present for Copilot Plus PCs, Microsoft is displaying more search results inside the dropdown that appears whenever you're searching for a setting. Recommended settings now make changes faster by showing an inline agent option for recently modified settings, and a dialogue now appears when settings cannot be adjusted further. And finally, related to the File Explorer, as part of the Copilot Plus PC experience, the File Explorer search box placeholder text has been updated to highlight the enhanced Windows search. And these are basically the new AI features that are only present for Copilot Plus PCs. Now let's move on to normal features for normal users and PCs. First of all, related to Windows Spotlight, if you have the Windows Spotlight set as your desktop background inside Settings, Personalization, and then Background, the context menu will now include two options, learn more about this background, and also next desktop background. Microsoft is also adding some improvements for a drag tray, and now it will support multi-file sharing, which will also show more relevant apps and make it easier to move files to a chosen folder. So as you can see, I can drag two different files and the drag tray will open up and I can share it to my phone, Outlook, Microsoft Teams, Snipping Tool, Paint, and also move to a folder. And this will open up the file explorer and then I can select the folder where I want to move those files. Also, you can now turn off drag tray if you don't want it or if you want to turn it on you can just open up the settings app and go into the system section and then scroll down to nearby sharing and here you're going to have the option drag tray drag and drop content to share move or more and then you can disable or enable also the keyboard backlight performance has been improved on supported hid compliant keyboards compatible keyboards display keys clearly in low light environments and the backlight adjusts to help conserve power related to the file explorer microsoft will add dark mode for more dialogues and for more sections of the Windows operating system. So for example, confirmation dialogues for actions like skip, override, and file selection, copy, move, and delete, all of them now have dark mode. And I'm only going to show you one example. For example, if I want to delete a file, we're going to get this new dialogue that now supports dark mode. And everything is looking very good right now because of course, dark mode is the best whenever you're using your PC at night, for example. And also multiple error dialogues were changed to now support dark mode. So I think that is great news. Also really 
ability to share in File Explorer, Microsoft is working on changing the share options in the context menu into a single entry point and this change at the beginning will be available to a small number of devices as Microsoft is trying to see what's the best approach. We also have some fixes related to the File Explorer. First of all, File Explorer may unexpectedly not show thumbnails for video files containing certain EXIF metadata. Also, they fix an issue where an old white toolbar may sometimes randomly appear in File Explorer. And also, they fix an issue where when you right click on a file, the icon next to the entry to open may be generic rather than matching the default app for that file type. Related to the settings app, we also have a lot of improvements. For example, the keyboard settings for character repeat delay and rate and cursor blink rate have moved from the old control panel to settings. You can find the character repeat delay and rate under settings accessibility and keyboard and the cursor blink rate under settings accessibility and then text cursor. Also in the settings homepage, you can now view the device card which will show some key specifications and usage details of your PC and from the card you can directly access the about section inside settings which by the way has also been updated a bit so that it has an updated layout that organizes device details and related options in one place and you can quickly access features such as stored settings for a faster navigation. Also inside Bluetooth and devices and then mobile devices Microsoft has also updated this page so that you can now add and manage your mobile devices directly from here and if you select your phone you're going to be able to see that we have an updated view for this page as well that allows you to turn features on or off depending on whether your phone supports them or not. Also inside system then advanced Microsoft now allows you to enable virtual workspaces in this section and this will allow you to enable or disable virtual environments such as Hyper-V, Windows Sandbox and more. And you can access it from here virtual workspaces and from here as you can see you have a lot of options and then you can enable virtual machine platform, the Windows Hyper-V, also Windows Sandbox and more. I think this is pretty useful. And also references related to Game Pass and settings are now modified to reflect updated branding and benefits. In addition to these, we have a settings fix for when settings may become unresponsive when attempting to navigate to the network and internet section that has now been fixed. Also as spotted by Phantom of Earth on Twitter or X.com, Microsoft has also added a new feature related to the start menu where now the search box will match the file explorer size. I think that is also a pretty nice addition. Related to Windows Hello, Microsoft is now adding support for peripheral fingerprint sensors and if you want to enroll a supported fingerprint reader, you can go to settings accounts and then sign in options and follow the prompts. Related to Windows Share, you can now share OneDrive files through other apps. The options appear under Share Using when you select the copy link, but you must be signed into your Microsoft account. Related to Taskbar, Microsoft is updating the animations that appear when hovering over app groups on the taskbar or when you're sliding between apps so you can see the preview transition. I think this is pretty nice and Microsoft has finally added this into the release preview channel and soon enough on the main release. We also have a few taskbar fixes. For example, the automatically hide the taskbar setting may unexpectedly turn off after seeing a message saying a toolbar is already hidden on this side of your screen, but that will no longer be the case because Microsoft has fixed this. And also voice access doesn't work correctly when attempting to interact with the taskbar. Pulling out a number may not invoke that item that has also been fixed. Related to quick machine recovery in settings, if you go to system and then scroll down a bit to recovery and then select quick machine recovery, we're going to notice that Microsoft has changed the default setting when enabling both of these options and in the look for solution section we're going to see that quick machine recovery will now run a one-time scan by default instead of repeating scans in a loop if a fix isn't available right away this will quickly point you to the most appropriate recovery option to get you back up and running the widgets board has also received some updates in this build and you can now choose a default dashboard in widget board settings and if you select the settings section you can check this on or off if you want to do so but when live weather is showing the widget board opens the first dashboard in your navigation bar instead of the most recently used one making the experience consistent also the dashboard icons in the widgets navigation bar now show numbers that correspond to the number of alerts from that dashboard and also navigation bar badges clear automatically when you leave a dashboard making it easy to track what's new microsoft is also adding the new onedrive icon in the account section and also in the settings homepage. so if you want to see that you can go to accounts and then you're going to see the new icon here which is looking pretty good alongside with all the new icons for the whole office suit. Related to input, pens that support haptic feedback will now deliver tactile responses during certain interactions with the system UI. For example, you may feel vibrations when hovering over the close button or when snapping and resizing windows. As spotted by Phantom of Earth on Twitter or X.com, Microsoft is also updating magnifier in Windows and if you open it up for the first time, you'll notice that you'll have a new window that will appear which will basically explain everything new added to magnifier and how 
to use it. I think that is also pretty useful. Related to lock and login screens, Microsoft fixed an issue where it may be very slow for the first time when logging into a new account. And they also fixed an issue for when your lock screen is set to slideshow, there may be a memory leak. Memory leaks can lead to performance or reliability issues over time. Related to display and graphics, Microsoft improved the performance when apps query monitors for their full list of supported modes. When this happens, it could previously lead to a momentary stutter on very high resolution monitors. This work should help prevent and reduce stuttering in those scenarios. They also fix an issue for when all-in-one PCs may experience issues with their brightness slider, where it unexpectedly reverts to the original brightness when interacting with it. And they also fix an issue where recently certain games may show a message showing unsupported graphics card detected, although a supported graphics card is used. Related to smart cards, Microsoft also fix an issue where you may unexpectedly see status not supported with an error code during logon when using ECC smart card logon credential. And finally, a security fix for Windows 11. This update addresses an issue that affects local security authority subsystem service, which could become unstable due to an access violation. And this is basically all there is to it in the latest Windows 11 25H2 big update. This is the update of November, which will also come on the mail list very soon. And of course, pay attention to my channel because I'm going to make videos in which I'll show you how to manually label all the new features. And if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.